What's up everybody? Just rolling into Western Nebraska here. Spent the last month or so behind the camera filming the guys down in Florida, Alabama, then went to Tennessee, filmed Mindy when she shot her first turkey ever. It was an incredible time there. But I'm back in my home state and gonna do about a, a week of truck camping and turkey hunting. Got the bow with me, it's bow season right now, and then in a few days, it's gonna be shotgun seasons. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of both. So I'm really excited about this trip and got here with just enough time to get out and listen, hopefully put something to roost tonight. Unfortunately, the weather is not gonna be great during this week, it's gonna be kind of up and down. A couple decent weather days and then a lot of colder days, windy, chances of rain and snow. You know, after hunting down south for a month in 60, 70, 80 degree temperatures, it get used to the warmth, but you know, here it is, it's mid-April, and this is Nebraska. The weather can really be all over the place. But at this point, those large winter flocks should be breaking up into smaller groups. I've talked to some guys that have been hunting in this area in the past couple weeks, and that's what they've been seeing. You know, hopefully as, as the week goes on, we get a couple nice weather days, you know, hopefully they'll start to break up a little more and find some lonely toms that are willing to play. I love that. Just pulled up here real quick, stopped, got out and listened. You could hear two gobblers back up in this big creek bottom. Drop a pin here, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where they're at, it's pretty faint. All right, got them pinned. Move on here, got just enough time to maybe get to another spot and listen and see if I can mark something else, but off to a good start here in Nebraska. turkeys roosted over there but I've run out of room on the private land or excuse me I run out of room on the public land they're on private they're a little bit farther off than where I thought they were and they've got hens with them originally I thought maybe they were roosted on this ridge right here which is still on public they're gonna go up at some point but there there you can hear the whole group is right there but anyways there may be 250 300 yards away down through this bottom I think I'm gonna continue there they are I'm gonna just look around here and see if I can find a good spot to set up and try to call one up through here or if the group works their way up through this this valley here scratching around through these oaks and then goes up on top it was possible that's what they do Man, what a gorgeous morning. I just decided to give up on that big group of birds. I could tell they were starting to work their way off farther onto the private land, but they may cut across a corner of the public up there. If I can get around them, they're heading in that direction. They may, they may be in a huntable location. If anything else, what I wanna do, since it's still relatively calm this morning, it's supposed to get windy today, but before the day winds pick up, I wanna get to an, another high point and do some calling, see if I can strike something up before the winds really start kicking. <laughs> and well, I made it back to the truck, came up on this high point, and I've kind of worked my way around the direction of that big group of turkeys was heading. I just got up here and called and had a hen answer and then a tom gobbled, or presumably a tom gobbled. Back out here and go around. Might be a good spot to catch him moving across that ridge. I was just starting to work my way around. It's bold to get out on that ridge. I just heard a bird gobble right there. They may very well come up onto this flat or work their way along the ridge. But at this point, assuming there's a bunch of birds in that group, I don't think I'd dare try to get around on them. They'd be coming to the calling anyways.
came right up on top here and I didn't didn't have time to make a great setup. Brought him within bow range, you know, 25, 30 yards away, but I'm not gonna take a shot at a spook turkey that far. But it sounds like that whole group of turkeys is working down below me. I can hear the hands, can hear more gobblers down there. I'm gonna make a mad dash and try to move around in front of them. Well, it's about noon right now. I'm gonna take a quick break, go get something to eat. Shane Simpson is actually in town. Go eat lunch with him real quick and then get back after it. But the weather started out pretty nice this morning, but it's overcast now. The wind has picked up and the birds have just really shut things down. But looking at the forecast for this afternoon, or actually just here in the next couple of hours, the sun's supposed to come back out. The winds are gonna die down a little bit. So hopefully the birds will get a little bit more active throughout the, the late morning here into the middle part of the day. climbed up this steep hill going after a strutter I just saw from the road. Took a little break midday here, driving back out. I spotted this tom. This is actually back up in the area where I started at this morning. I'm trying to be careful here not to get picked off. It's just impossibly thick through there. I'm gonna have to make a quick move around the rim of this ridge, get back down low. Chasing after these Merriams is no joke. Work my way around this ridge right here, trying to get up on his same level. Basically across the valley from where I saw him, he was headed back up in here. Just see if I can, I'll get up towards the top here and See if I can strike him up. Right there. Got up above him here. By the time that I came in here on, gobbled fairly close, probably within 150 yards, and then he's kind of drifted back down and was called real loud and aggressive, got him to gobble again, and then it sounds like there's possibly that same group of birds that I was on this morning is back off to the off to my left. So I'd like to be able to just reel that thing right in here and get a shot. I'm not in a bad position. I mean, these pines are absolutely tore up with scratching, fresh scratching, where you can tell the flock came through. I mean, it's just all churned up. That's a bird I was after, or a different one. But... Come on.
There we go. There we go. Whew. Down. That was close. Yes. He came, there's this little island of trees right here. He came through that and then up around it, walked in front of me five yards away. I don't know what the cameras picked up. I had, had the main camera set because I knew there was no way I was gonna get away with any more movement. I just had it set. He walks up here and is right in the edge of the frame. And I'm looking down at it, it's like, man, I do not want to shoot him off camera. Like he's just right on the edge, but he acted like he was starting to get a little nervous, like he might turn and walk away. Finally, he broke and started going to the decoy. And he, got, he walked into the frame and gave me an easy eight yard shot. That, hey, that bird is still gobbling over there. The weather broke. The weather broke a little bit this afternoon. It's warmed up in the upper 40s. Sun's come out a little bit. The winds died down a touch, and the birds are just lighting it up. A bird off to my right. I'm not sure which one that is. If that's the original one I came after, or the the one that I got is the one I came after. It sounds like that group of turkeys. Maybe working back up this way. I'm a little bit undecided as if I would shoot two turkeys right away like that, though. I hate to take too many out of an area. Usually I, I try not to do that. Space them out a little bit between, you know, throughout the season and uh, just across different properties. But I got a bird down 10 yards away right there. Got another tom goblin on the opposite ridge and it sounds like those hens, they're probably that group of turkeys working back up through here. He must have, he must have a spot up there that he likes that he's not gonna budge from. But I'll sit down here and just see what happens. Hands have just worked their way off up the hill. <laughs> I can't believe that first one came by at five yards. These last two came by at 10 feet. Oh, there's the gobbler. He finally, finally broke from his knob up there where he's been gobbling for the last 45 minutes. He's gonna follow those hens. But he was on a knob up there, you know, maybe 150 yards straight across this valley, just gobbling his brains out. I could hear him drubbing over there from time to time. That's one of those turkeys, like he would not break. You know, with all the calling that I was doing, he would not budge. Even as those hens were calling as they were coming up through here, he never moved from that position. He finally broke when the hens passed by me and got up on that ridge, and I'm assuming he could see them, and then eventually just followed right behind him. But it's been 30 minutes since I shot that bird, so I'm excited to go look at him. I really hate spooking turkeys, so when those, I could tell those hens were coming up here, and that tom was still gobbling over on this ridge, I really didn't want to move from my position, potentially spook them. That way, if anybody else comes in here and hunts, hopefully those birds are you know, a little bit less for the wear as far as hunting pressure goes. All right, I'm gonna go look at this thing. About a seven yard shot. But you can see how well this hide turned out. You know, I had the sun you know, casting shadows down in there and with the drape and everything with the cedar tree behind me and a big pine next to me. You know, that, it worked out really well. There's the arrow up the blades pretty bad but I hit him right through the wing butt I did the job there's the shot there's the bird there he is oh look at that sharp white spurs wispy beard 
Look at that. That is my favorite part. Merriam's right there. That gorgeous color in the tail fan. Actually looks maybe, maybe this is more of a hybrid. It's got some rusty color. Man, that is awesome right there. Well, that was a fun day of bow hunting turkeys right there. I'm assuming that this group of turkeys that kind of moved through here this afternoon were the same ones that I was on this morning. And I think what happened when I you know, went and took that lunch break, that group had just been loafing over on the other side. And then as it got a little bit nicer, they started to get out and move again. They haven't fully broken up yet. They were kind of all roosted in the same area together, but throughout the day, they kind of spread out. And a midday hunting like this can really pay off. That's when you get birds that are kind of separating from the groups and get a, get a lone tom like this that willing to come to the call and wants to play. I mean, I love all turkey hunting, but there's something about chasing Merriams in country like this that, that I just really love. It's definitely my favorite. I mean, my heart was pounding out of my chest when this thing came by at five yards. Actually, I think I'm sitting on the spot that he walked through. I think this is about right. Literally five yards from the setup, and then, then he hung up, you know, at full draw, and he hangs up on the edge of the frame. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's gonna turn and go away. And I could have shot him at that point, but I, you know, I wanted to get, I wanted to get good footage, get the bird all the way in the frame, and, and thankfully he broke and continued towards the decoy, and I didn't let him get much farther in the frame. He turned broadside and hit him just right in the wing butt, but it punched all the way through to the vitals, and that big uh, two and three quarter uh, three blade broadhead, you know, put him down within 10 yards. So at this point, I'll see if Maybe Shane Simpson wants a cameraman in the morning, hunt with him tomorrow, and then I've got some editing work to get done, and then maybe get after him with a shotgun for a couple days. I try to make it back to Nebraska every year. Um, you know, it's my home state, and you know, obviously have a lot of good memories of hunting back in my hometown, and then hunting out in the western part of the state as well. Something I try to do every year, it's, uh, like I said, this is, this is my happy place. This is where I love chasing turkeys. Almost 22, 21 and three quarters. Heck yeah. That's a good one. Good one.